Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. and Welcome to the lesson number seven of the series of tutorial on how to build a WordPress plugin from scratch. Welcome again. This lesson won't be much about developing a WordPress plugin, but will be mostly focused, or I would say 100% focused on PHP object-oriented programming and understanding different visibility of variables and methods inside a PHP class. We need to do this quick lesson because from um, next lessons, we're gonna split this file in multiple files. We're gonna use different methods to call different functions. So we're going to start using more advanced PHP object-oriented programming. If you already know everything about object-oriented programming, you can totally skip this uh, lesson. It's not going to be important for you. What I'm going to show in this lesson, I'm going to explain and show how to properly use the different visibility options, understanding what's the difference between a public, private, and protected variable and method in PHP, as well as how to properly use static methods. So let's get started. First of all, in object-oriented programming, as I said at the beginning of these tutorials, we need to define a class that then wraps inside this class all different methods. So in order to access a method of the class, we need to create a new instance of the class and store the new instance inside a variable. And then from that variable that handles, like carries the new instance around, call the method with this little arrow, like a dash and then the bigger than sign and call the name of the method. This is pretty standard PHP object oriented programming and this works only because all the methods inside a class in PHP are public methods. So let's start by checking the visibility of a method and uh, what does it mean. We have three options to define the visibility of a variable or a method. These options are public, protected, and private. If you saw some code of PHP, you probably found uh, something like this, like public function or private function or as well protected function. And of course, sometimes you can find protected static function, but we're going to check the static later. For now, let's maintain just our focus on the, the public, pr private, and protected. So if you notice this in uh, PHP, sometimes you see the code and you find these declarations before a function. This is totally normal. It's part of PHP. And what it does basically defines the visibility of a specific method. So it's saying to PHP, basically, oh, I'm going to write here a small description, a public method or a public variable, you could have also a variable, we're going to see that in a moment, but a public method can be accessed everywhere. So it can be accessed from the class itself, outside the class by declaring the instance, and it is exactly what we're doing here. We are accessing the register that it's a public method from the instance of the class. We can do this because the register is public. If we don't specify anything, like in the construct, we don't specify any declaration here, any visibility option, a function, a method inside the class by default is public. So all this stuff here, the register, the activate, deactivate, custom post type and in queue are all public methods. So that's why we can access it by calling them directly from a new instance of the class. And that's pretty standard. A protected method is a method that can be accessed only within the class itself. And what it means basically, if for example, we want to declare that the custom post type is protected and we decide to do alleycat plugin call the custom post type method. This is going to trigger a PHP error. And let's take a look at what it does. Let's refresh our backend. There you go. We have our uncut error call to a protected method from the Alicat plugin custom post type 
on line 81 and the line 81 is exactly the line that we're calling this method so because we declare the custom post type to be protected we cannot access the method outside the class this is a new instance of the class we're not inside the class so we're trying to access that method outside the class itself and we cannot do it but if we just remove this, uh, we remove the protected here, we save it, we go back in our backend, we refresh. Of course, we don't have the error message anymore, but if we have a method, for example, let's create a new protected method that prints stuff, let's call it that way, it doesn't really matter. And let's say just a simple var dump. And here, let's print um, var dump of test, whatever, it's just an inline array. So now we have this protected function. And as I said, we cannot access that protected function uh, from outside the class. But what we can do, we can access the protected function from only within the class itself. So if in the construct, we call the dollar this global variable, uh, predefined variable of the class that stands for the class itself and we say this class called print stuff method let's save it let's go back in our backend let's refresh here you can see what we got inspect element let me delete or remove this page we have the echo of our test var dump test string that's pretty good. So we know that now if we have a protected function that can only be accessed within the class itself, we can uh, write our code a little bit better and avoid that uh, a method that we don't want the user or the developer the ability to trigger automatically or outside the class can be triggered only from within the class itself, from within the constructor. So for example, instead of having the init instead of the custom post type here inside, inside the constructor, we could create a protected function called create post type and then here we could pass the action of calling the public method of custom post type let's remove the protected print stuff and here in the construct we can simply call the create post type. If we save it, we go back here, we refresh, of course, not in change it, we still have our books, but the thing that we did, basically we removed from the construct, the trigger in the auto triggery and initialization of the custom post type, we delegated that trigger into a protected function that can be accessed only from the class itself. And the protected can also be accessed by a class that extends this class. So for example, if I create a new class called second class and say that this class extends the alicad plugin class. And let's say that here I want a function that it's called register post type. I can call this. And here I can say that this function called the create post type and not the construct here. Of course, if we save right now and we refresh, we're not gonna have the books custom post type anymore because we remove it. But in here, if we generate a new instance of the class, for example, second class, we say that second class it's equal to new second class and no parameters passed and then here we can say the second class we need to call the register post type of the second class let's save it let's go back in our backend let's refresh look what we got here the books custom post type even if we're not calling the create post type anymore this create post type is a protected method inside our alicat plugin and the protected method can be accessed only within the class itself because we created another class we're extending the main parent class we can call that method even if it's protected because it's that's how it works a protected visibility can be called 
within the class itself or a class that extends that main parent class. If this sounds confusing, I'm sorry. <laughs> it should be like pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And if you are wondering what are the benefits of this thing, like why are we doing this? Why are we explaining the class in many, many different functions? Right now, you probably will not see the benefits of this because it sounds just, it feels like convoluted. It feels like we're splitting stuff and we're not actually implementing anything better, but we're just like making our code more and more complicated. But in the future, you will see how important it is to split your class in different methods, extending other class and uh, properly protecting your methods with um, different visibility declarations. The last method that I want to show you is the private method and the private method can be accessed only by the class itself. So let's copy also this and here actually the protected class itself or extensions of that class. The private method can be accessed only by the class itself, not even by an extension. So if for example, I have new private function and let's use again uh, print stuff because I really like it. And here again, let's echo Let's echo this time, uh, test, whatever. This private function can be, of course, accessed from the construct. So if we say dollar this print stuff, we save it, we go back in our backend, refresh, we have our test. And you notice here we have it double because what is happening, because the second class is extending the Alicat plugin class, and we're generating a new instance because the class is extending the main one, automatically when we create a new instance, also the default construct gets called twice because we are creating a new instance of an extended class and the parent class gets called again. That's why we have it twice. That's how that's clear. But if we remove this, of course, or if we comment this out and we try, as I did before inside the Alicat plugin to call the print stuff method here and we save it, we're gonna have a PHP error. Call to a private method on print stuff from contents. We cannot call a private method. And of course, if we try or not, of course, if we try to call the print stuff from the second class that extends our main Alicat plugin class, so we do second class print stuff, save it, go back here, refresh, say method here on line 101, 101 is this, of course, same exact issue. But if we try again inside the construct of this class to print dollar this print stuff, we save it, we go back in our backend, refresh again, sorry, function, I forgot, we refresh. Again, we're gonna have a call to a private method in print stuff, Alicat plugin on line 89. And 89, we have our construct here. So even if we are inside a class that extends Alicat plugin main class, we cannot call the print stuff because print is private. That method is private. This method can be called because that method is protected. That's the difference between public, protected, and private. And as I said, if we don't declare anything, a function by default is public, uh, the visibility needs to be declared always, always before the function. You cannot write function private register. This will trigger an error. And that's pretty much everything that you need to know. It's like really generic and really a quick overview of the visibility of the methods. And these declaration, public, protected, and private, they work exactly the same for variables. So if you notice, sometimes you looked at a class in object-oriented programming PHP, you notice that before the constructor method, we have a bunch of variable declarations just right after the opening class. So for example, we have this uh, uh, variable one that it's equal to one, and then we have the array one that it's equal to an empty array stuff like that. Also, these variables can be public or can be 
protected or as well can be private. So by declaring the visibility of the variable, you will have the same exact behavior of a method visibility. So that's pretty much it. I hope this is not too confusing. In the next lesson, we're gonna see the last part of this uh, PHP object-oriented programming quick tutorial about the uh, static declaration, that it's really important and it's gonna be really helpful for us to properly structure our plugin. Uh, if this lesson was kind of confusing, please re-watch it again. I will put also in the description of this video the official documentation of PHP. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys, and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.